welcome back, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be building the sifter. A little bit bigger, a little bit faster, new and improved. Uh, we got our stuff here. We're going with the eight inch cedar board this time instead of the six inch. So we'll be a little bit deeper, hold a little more material. Plus we're gonna go just slightly wider and slightly longer. So we got a cedar board, eight inch, also, we're going back to quarter inch screen here. I had a roll of this already laying around, so we're going to use it on this. I had that half inch, but as you saw in the last video, we almost lost that killer uh, triangle. Diagonally, it almost went through the screen. So we're going back to the smaller screen. Hopefully we won't lose anything that way. I'll get started. I'll get this board cut and then we'll start putting it together. Okay, we got our pieces cut here. Uh, you can see about how large this box is gonna be. Bigger than the last one. I figured to hold at least uh, 50 more percent than the last one did. So we're gonna put these uh, screws in here, screw it together. We're using these long three inch screws so they'll sink way back in to the sideboards, give it more strength. And always drill a pilot hole first with a smaller drill bit. That way you don't take a chance on splitting your cedar because the cedar ain't cheap. We put three screws in each corner then they sink way down in there like I showed you three inch screws that'll give it a lot of strength now we're gonna put our screen on and I'll show you how we do that okay we got our screen cut to length now we're gonna staple it on to the box now this is kind of tricky because it's hard to get stretched tight and you have to have it tight you don't want it sagging here in the middle you know and all the concentrated stuff going to the center so you want to try to get that fairly tight what I like to do is lay it up here and go along this first edge and make a good sharp 90 degree bend on this side first on the little end one of the little ends And we'll get our staple gun loaded up and staple this down. Okay, we got one side stapled. Now we spun it around. And you want to make sure you get this, pull this tight. And then try to force that 90 down on it so you don't lose any slack. Or give up any slack. Pull it tight. Try to get a staple in there. A few of them. Okay. And then work the corners. And we'll show you how we do that here as soon as we get this stapled. Okay, we got our front and back stapled. Now what I've done here, I've taken a couple of clamps, long clamps clamped it on the side of the box this way and put slight pressure on it and just watched it bow in just a little bit that way when i pull this over and staple it and release the clamps it'll keep this screen tight okay now when you get to the corner i came up the side i stapled it all the way down on the ends and when i come up the side i left it about four inches and what we're going to do we're just going to fold this down like a, like a Christmas present when you're folding wrapping paper on the corner. Fold it like this and then fold it over. And I have a little hammer. You could use any hammer. I'm using this uh, plastic like nylon hammer. Make sure that's down good and flat. 
and then staple it on. I'm using the uh, half inch staples, the, the longer ones, just so it uh, sticks in the wood. We don't want the screen popping off. And you want to do this. Don't cut it off here and here because you want the strength of this screen going around here to help hold the box together. We don't want to solely rely on those three uh, screws that we put in here. So we'll fold that around and then we'll staple it in. And this staple gun, it does do pretty well, but the staples are lacking from going clear down in. So once I'm all done, I'll just go around and tap them all in like that. Now we'll do the other corners and then we'll start the next step. Okay, there we have our basic sifter box with the screen on the bottom. You know, you are going to get some flex, but when you're putting stuff in there, this wood's going to flex in a little bit. But that's good. It's not going to hurt anything. Just try to get it as tight as you can. If you have somebody to help you stretch it while you're stapling, that would be a lot better, I'd say. So now what we're going to do, we got the bottom. We used the screen to strengthen around the bottom. We have our three bolts in each side each corner now we're going to take this strapping it's uh like you can buy it at lowe's some kind of probably any hardware store it's just a metal strapping with holes in it multi-purpose use i think they use this to uh hang ceilings with the uh, low hanging ceiling tiles but what we're going to do we're going to cut four little pieces of this maybe four or five inches long and we're going to wrap it around these corners here and screw it in with some drywall screws I use drywall screws for everything and that'll give this top corner strength also so it won't pull apart or break on us Okay, we have all of our strapping around the top corners. This box is nice and secure. Now, the only length of drywall screws, the shortest ones I could find was one inch. So coming through here, as you can see, they're sticking out. And you do not want to leave those sticking out because you will cut yourself or rip your skin or something open. So when it's all said and done, I'm going to take a grinder with a whiz wheel and knock those off and grind them down. So now the next step is we are gonna put the sides on. Now, I was gonna go with what I was looking for was some old big wheels that I could take the big large plastic tires because they're like four inches wide and I was gonna put wheels on it with two axles in each end. But I'm unable to locate that right now, and I wanted to get this built. I can always take the skids off and go back to the wheels later. No problem, just unscrew them. But we're going to just do like we did the last time. We're going to put skids on here. But instead of the inch and a half smaller pipe that we had, the yellow, I have a piece of two-inch conduit upstairs. It's straight, but I'm going to try to bend it make a nice curve to it to go on the skids. If not, we're just going to use the yellow again. Okay, here we have a couple pieces of half inch plywood. Pretty simple. We're going to put this up on the side, let it come up probably about three quarters of the way to the top. And then on the bottom, we're going to draw an arc, an arch right through here and round this up because we don't want to flat on the bottom because it'll be you know jamming into the dirt and causing a lot of problems we want that curve so it pulls easier plus when you get it in the water and you're rocking it back and forth it's much easier to put that curve on all right i'll get that drawn out 
and I get back with you. Okay, we got our arch drawn on here. It took me a couple of attempts. First one I had a little too steep. You don't want it that steep. Just a gradual curve. Now we'll take it over and we'll cut these out. Now only, just you only have to draw it on the top one and then stack them when you cut them. That way you know they're both the same perfect. <laughs> Okay, we got our plywood sanded, got our curve really nice. Now we're gonna put it up on here and decide, you know, how high we want it. Now you don't want this to sit, you know, you're gonna have the pipe still gonna come out a little bit, maybe three eighths of an inch, half inch when it's on there. Not much, but you don't want this super high because then you have to put it even in deeper water to work it. So we'll uh, make sure we got our good measurements the same all the way down on on each side and then we'll screw it in. I will say I'm going to use these one inch screws and they will not go through all of this but I'll put some in the outside. The cedar is a lot softer than the plywood so I would put some screws on the inside just because it'll hold the threads will hold the uh, plywood a lot better and tighter down the last time I put liquid nail glue under there and then I wanted to change the screen to the half inch and I had to pry it and I had a hard time getting it off so I would just screw it on there the screws seem to hold pretty well without the glue Okay, we got the sides on. We haven't put the screws on the inside yet. Holding off on that because I got uh, an idea for this sifter. It's gonna make it a lot faster. Go through dirt and sand a lot quicker. Well, sand, not dirt. Dirt doesn't get through the screen very well. Okay, in hindsight, I made a little mistake here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill side holes uh, with the biggest bit that I have and I'm going to step them all over the sides like this and along the front and back also and then I have this uh, it's it's gutter guard I got it at Lowe's it's like small expanded metal stuff I'm going to staple that on the inside like this to cover the holes so nothing can get out the holes but in hindsight I should have drilled the board the holes before I put the screen on because now I'm limited to putting the holes up a little higher and I can't have them down here low so if you build it make sure you put your holes in first but we are going to put some holes in the side which will make it go a lot quicker and it's probably going to need to go, need to have the holes in the side anyways. As large as this is, it's going to be stacked. Dirt and sand is going to be stacked up to here. And it's not going to go down through the bottom as quickly until you get it all slurried down. And with the side ports in it, water can come in from all angles. Slurry it down real quick. So I'll get that sped up and uh, we'll drill those holes. Okay, I'm going to be using this one inch auger type bit to put holes randomly in the front back and the sides it's the largest bit I have so I do have a hole saw but I'm missing a part to it so I'll just use the auger bit because I don't want to drill too big of holes and weaken the board I decided against the gutter guard uh, it was hard to cut with that curve on the end. Hard to explain, but I'm just gonna use the uh, screen. I just cut some strips of screen and we're gonna staple them on the inside over the holes all the way around.
Okay, we got all of our screen stapled on all the way around, covering up our holes. Now I thought, you know, before I did that, why couldn't I have just gone and drilled like uh, 3 8 holes all over this, like Swiss cheese? But I think the dirt or the sand, trying to get through a uh, small hole through that much wood might clog up. This is a lot better here, the larger holes one inch with the screen in front of it and I don't think that I'm going to be able to bend that two inch conduit as much as I would like to have that um, I'm just going to have to go back to the yellow stuff and use the same thing the polyethylene like we have on the other one because I have a piece of it and it came off of a roll and it's already got a natural uh, memory curve to it so I'll probably just use that and that'll be the last step of the, the new and improved sifter it's a lot larger a lot deeper this thing's gonna hold a lot of dirt hopefully I'll be able to move it around but uh, I think it'll be okay I think it'll work out really nice so we'll get our pipe and we'll get that on there. I'll show you how we do that. And that'll be close to finished. Besides cutting off these uh, screw tips and putting our rope on there. What we're going to do now is we're going to put it on the bottom. I left it uh, a little long on each side. Just so it, I can have it stick up more. Give it more like a sled so it doesn't dig into the uh, ground when I'm pulling it. So what I'm going to do is cut a groove, a square groove, rectangular groove in this all the way down so it'll slide up on the plywood. Now I can't cut through that with a pipe because it's or with a knife because it's pretty thick. So I'm going to take it over to the sander and I'm going to thin the top of it a little bit so I can cut it with a knife better. I'll mark this and then we'll get it on. We got our groove cut and now we're gonna put this what we have to do is put the uh, pipe over the plywood. We'll screw, we'll put a screw here. Then we'll bend it down, put a screw there, bend it down, put a screw there. Okay, we got our uh, polyethylene pipe all attached on the bottom. Now all I had was the three inch screws, so they're sticking way through. So I'm just gonna cut those off like the ones on the top when I get to that. Next, we'll put the rope on. Okay, we're gonna go with this uh, nylon strap instead of the rope, because I think this will last longer. The other one, as I was pulling it, it rubbed the side and eventually kept rubbing through the rope. Not too bad, it took a month to rub through, and then I would have to slide it in and tie a new uh, knot on the inside. But I'm gonna drill holes in the side run the rope through and we'll attach it now don't run your rope through the front and pull off the front like this because that's a lot of straight strain on this front plate run it through the side in the side piece it won't hurt the front of the uh, sifter that way And there we have it, our completed sifter. Got our strap, everything turned out nice. All we have to do is cut the, we still have to cut those uh, screws off that are sticking through. But our next video, we should be down at the river testing this thing out, see how it works. Uh, here's that uh, gun barrel that was found. On a video before last, I believe it was, it must have been packed in some clay 
because the inside of it is pitted. This is very pitted, and the inside is pitted down to here, but then back in the back seems to have, I was able to get in there and clean that out with a brush, a bore brush, and it, it seems to be fairly smooth inside. A friend of mine uh, took the markings off of it and identified it as a 1750 to 1815 British Sea Service muzzle loader with a flint lock. I'd love to find the action for that thing down there, but as much as this barrel's roached out, I'd say it's probably even worse. So, if you like this one, give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and check out my last few videos. I think you'll really like them. And just remember, we're not just an adventure channel. We're an adventure channel with a twist. We'll catch you on the next one.